Hey, the content used in this video is intended for educational and informational purposes only. All rights to the images, music, clips, and other materials used belong to their respective owners. I do not claim ownership over any third-party content used in this video. Let's get to the video, dog. The troopers find a total of 46,089 MDMA pills, all containing methamphetamine, with a total weight of 6.5 kilograms. DeAndre Brown was sentenced to 120 months in federal prison, followed by five years of supervised release for drug trafficking. Hey, yo, baby D. Get your little ass over here on the mic, man. Show these other little niggas they can't fuck with the dangerous crew, man. Spit that shit. Shit on gold, gold, shine, gold, glasses, prime time like Dion. Hey, can't do the corn, do the Dion. You hear me? He don't speak on me, I don't compete with a peon. Fly in a bundle like my name is Dion. I'm gonna tell you what the number one problem is in our community and why all our young people in our community keep on getting themselves jammed up in this life of crime. And the number one problem is don't nobody keep it real with the young people and let them know that life is all about ups and downs, peaks and valleys, trials, tribulations. You're going through something at the moment, the next moment you up. That's what life is about and that's what pertains to a life of living a righteous lifestyle, bruh. It ain't always going to be up, 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 up. Sometimes you're going to go through a struggle. And just because you're going through a struggle doesn't mean that you resort to a desperation attempt to try to get yourself out of that hole that you were fell into or the valley that God is sending you through or the test that God is putting you through. See, situations like this one right here, it could be a situation where this young brother here just got desperate. And he wanted to, you know, get himself out of the jam real quick, panicking, you know what I'm saying? And made a, a temporary decision that's going to lead to a permanent consequence. And it's going to be something that follows him forever, you know what I'm saying? As well as this young lady, you know, she might develop PTSD from going through this stuff. She might be stuck with a criminal record that prohibits her from getting a federal job because of this little situation that was temporary that they could have probably gotten over. You know what I'm saying? You know, not, not enough people are transparent with people. People only want to show you when things are good in their lives. You know what I'm saying? Oh, I just went and copped a new S550. You know what I'm saying? Oh, I just went and... Uh, Put down on this new house. Oh, look at my wrist. Look at my watch. You know what I'm saying? Look at the, the vacation that I'm on. Look at the new deal that I just signed. Look at the new jet that I just bought. Oh, look, we finna go to Barcelona. You know what I'm saying? Oh, we eating with the dolphins. They show you all these good things, but nobody shows the young people how to handle the, the tribulations of life. What about when you just went and put down on that house? And two weeks after you buy that motherfucker, the air conditioning you ain't go out on it. And that bitch cost 10000 because you got a big ass mansion. And you want to get the fucking, the top notch air conditioning system back in there like the people before you had. And you done spent everything out on your earnest money and your down payment and your fucking, you know what I'm saying? What about when you buy that S550 off the used lot and when the motor go out on that bitch three months down the road and you got to spend ten, fifteen thousand for a new motor? You know what I'm saying? What about when your mama house catch on fire and you just went and uh, took a trip that cost you 30 grand to go to Dubai? See, that's that shit that Rollo was talking about, how Boosie came and borrowed some money from him when he was going through his jam and didn't tell nobody about it. See, that's the shit they don't show. They just show when they're having the pool parties and they got the bottles and shit. But what about when shit get real? See, this is the type of shit that might have landed this young man, this young lady in this situation right here. 
and nobody talks about it, so people don't know how to handle it with a straight head. They just immediately go out and try to do something out of desperation. Let me call the big homie up. Big homie, I need to I need to hold about five thousand. Hey, you know what you gotta do to get that five thousand? Man. All right, I'll do what I do it just to get they self out of a jam. You know what I'm saying? See, that's the shit that y'all leave out in these ghetto hood glorified stories. Y'all don't tell niggas how to handle when they going through a depression. Because y'all don't even show when y'all going through a depression. But see, I'm going to show you. And I'm going to show you how to keep your eyes focused on the prize while you're going through it. That way you don't get yourself in a situation like this young man, this young lady did. You feel me? And uh, that's where we differ. Because I'm going to tell you uh, a little story about, you know, what's going on with me. And how I just had to overcome a little struggle. You know what I'm saying? Uh, just regular shit. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I would have handled it different back in the day. I probably would have panicked like a young man would have. But that's what comes along with growth. You feel me? Doing things a different way. Because you understand the lifestyle and the cycle of life. You feel me? Hold on. Let me answer this. My people at work. Yeah, man. Like I was saying, people don't, you know, tell young people about the real side of life, about how shit gonna be up one moment and shit gonna be down the next moment, man. Uh, I had a situation. Uh, Y'all know me. I drive trucks and shit. You know what I'm saying? I make a decent amount of money. So, you know, for the past... Nigga, six months? Shit, I been having it. Fuck you talking about? I been getting my miles, eating good, you know what I'm saying? Shit, it wasn't nothing for a nigga to have four, five thousand in the bank, you know what I'm saying? Just on some regular chill shit without even tripping on it. But like I said, man, with everything, there's an up and a down to shit. So, uh, you know, we just moved out of that little house on the lake over there that we had in this little country town down here on the coast and uh we moved out of that because i was having issues with my neighbor you know they had moved a section a girl by me and shit and started creating like a little ghetto type of vibe around our house and shit that we was in you know we was on the lake man so you know we moved out of that shit man to keep a nigga from getting a record because you know i ain't got no record bro i ain't got no felony don't want no felony on my record i need to keep everything open because i ain't got no help you feel me i ain't got no family that fucking stick they neck out and oh nigga you need some money you need blah blah, blah. i ain't got that all i got is myself g similar to a lot of y'all you know what i'm saying that don't have family and shit that's why you turn to the streets you feel me that's why i can relate to y'all i understand the the desperation attempt that y'all niggas go to and start selling dope and shit. You feel me? That's why I can fuck with y'all without judging you, but I just try to coerce you into doing something different. Find another way, because I don't want you to get jammed up. Because ain't nobody gonna understand your situation like a nigga that go through it. I've been through it just like you, my guy. You feel me? I done tried to do all this shit, get rich quick schemes and shit, sell a little dope and do all this old bullshit. Tricking bitches out of their money and welfare and food stamps. I did all that shit, man. You feel me? But anyway, like I was saying about my little recent situation. Damn, my people coming in the house. They finna interrupt my story with all the talking and shit. But I'm going to keep it going, though. So, uh, I, uh, you know, I got the fucking uh, 2012 uh, Chevy Tahoe, right? And I got the Camaro and shit. I was driving the Camaro to work. You know, just to... Try to save a little gas. Probably wouldn't save no gas because that bitch is his, so it ran off of 93. But anyway, I was driving that bitch because my truck needed some tires on it, right? So I said, all right, well, fuck it. I'm going to drive the Camaro for a little while, save the money up after we just moved into this house. Now, we just spent like 4000 just moving into this new spot. You feel me? So that'll dwindle a nigga bank account real quick. You feel me? If... You know, you remember my story. I just moved down here to the coast, had a penny in a job delivering furniture, just got a new job making good money, trying to save some money up, bills steady rolling, child support, kids to take care of, want to live a little bit of life, man, instead of trying to stack your paper up. So, shit, 4000 5000 in the bank, man, you've been doing good stacking your paper, really, you know what I'm saying? So, uh, anyway, spent that little foe to uh, get over here in this crib and stuff like that. Uh, 
first and last month, you know, renting shit until we get ready to buy and all this old shit, man. So, you know, life is going all right. So, you know, I'm getting back on my mission. I'm finna stack this paper back up again and shit, right? You know what I'm saying? Regular shit. I've been doing this shit for years. Man, how about about two or three weeks ago, I'm at my daughter's school picking her up from school, bro. I get to the stop sign by my daughter's school. And uh, when I put my foot on the accelerator to my truck, the mud won't go until the RPMs get up to about 2,000. So I'm like, man, what the fuck? I done got some bad gas. Cause I went to the, to the gas station by my house and 93 and 87 was out. No, 93 and 91, or 89 was out. 93 and 89 was out. All they had was 87. So I got the 87, so I'm thinking, Shit, man, goddamn store and gave me some bad gas, and now I gotta go to, uh, to the auto parts place and buy a fuel pump and get this bitch dropped in and all this. So I throw it in the shop. You know, I'm like, shit, all right, it's a Tuesday. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna throw it on in the shop. I'll probably have it out by Friday. Probably be by five hundred dollars. I'm gonna go ahead and drop that. And get back to rolling, man. I come get the record people to come pick my truck up. G, send that mug to the shop. Man, how about that man called me like a day later? That man said, bro, you need a whole new transmission. I said, damn. He said, yeah, it gave off blase, blase code and blase, blase. I said, what? He said, yeah, but, you know, we got some people around here that you can send it to. Man, I called them people, G. Now, mind you, I'm still trying to stack my paper up from this move down to the coast, then move in a new spot. About a month ago, spent $4,000 out of my account. Life been going on, so I'm steady paying other bills, cell phone, utility, insurance on the cars, car note, you feel me? Uh, putting the kids through school, because it was just August, you got to go buy uh, school clothes and shoes and, you know what I'm saying? You got to buy food and all this. We ain't getting no food stamps, dog. Ain't no Section 8 shit around here. Nobody giving a nigga nothing. And I'm steady helping people out. In my family, you know that, oh, you need $50, all right, here, 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 blah, blah, blah. You know what I'm saying? Regular shit, bro. Nigga, that man told me it's going to be $5,000 for a transmission, and I ain't got shit right now. I ain't lying. I ain't lying. I ain't lying. I ain't lying. Call somebody else. Oh, it'll be about $3,500, $4,500. So this is a real thing? Tell my girl about it. She what? Yeah, that what it is. That what it is right now. So, you know, we keep on going, you know, we trying to figure out what we gonna do, damn. What the fuck, man, god damn. Now, again, I ain't got no fucking support system. Don't nobody give me shit. My daddy don't help, my mama don't help me with shit. In actuality, I'll have you know that instead of helping a nigga out, People in my family think that I'm supposed to support them instead of them helping me. Now, me and my people, we have debates about this shit all the time. Black, family, black families and black parents are the only people in society that feel like their kids are supposed to provide for them. Not them go out and work a good job for a long time, retire from it, and give money to their kids whenever their kids help them. I was blessed with the type of people that think you supposed to fucking work your way up. They supposed to go do whatever they want to do. And then I'm supposed to give all my money to them. And then if you don't give your money to them, then you a fucked up individual as a, as a child. You feel me? These are the type of situations that I've been blessed into. You feel me? So needless to say, in the midst of me going through my troubles, my people get mad at me because they going through some troubles at the same time and I don't want to use my financial leverage to get them out of a jam. My credit and shit. So they don't talk to me now. Now the whole fucking family that disappeared and don't talk to me. You know, and mind you, I was always the one that was like the black sheep anyway. You know, everybody sit around in huddles and talk on the phone every day. Don't nobody call me and, hey, what's up? We just checking on you. Mind you. First grandchild, only child on my mama's side, and I come from a three or four person structure of a family. It's grandma, mama, uncle, 
and myself. I'm the last of the Mohicans, and I'm way down the line, so I'm the stepchild that get booted on top of the head, and uh, we'll fuck with it when we want to. And I come from a particular offspring of a person that's not exactly loved by my family for whatever reasons. So, you know, needless to say, nigga, when you talk support system shit, I don't have a support system. I'm really the ugly duckling and get treated like, yeah, whatever, we'll talk to you whenever, nigga. You know what I'm saying? And if you fall out with one of these, we definitely ain't gonna talk to your ass for a long time. So keep that in mind when you listen to my story of ups and downs and not having a support system behind me when I go through a trial in a valley. And I, I've been trying to keep this shit on the wrap for a long time, but it's, it's time that people come out and know the type of struggles that I deal with and still come on here and try to help other motherfuckers. You feel me? Like, I got my own troubles that I deal with and have been dealing with my whole life, and I still come on here and try to help y'all and act like ain't nothing wrong. See, all this shit y'all be seeing me pop my shit with, this shit come from maintaining by myself, bro. I don't be fucking asking nobody for nothing. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, I just wanted to put that shit in there. You know what I'm saying? I ain't got nobody I can call and, hey man, can you let me borrow 5000 and I'll pay you back 1000 a month? I ain't got no family like that, bro. Ain't nobody got shit around me. And the ones that do have some, they ain't gonna give you shit because they feel like you gotta kiss their ass for it. You know what I'm saying? They want you to be wiping their penis clean for them the whole time before you come and ask for something. And I, ain't, I just ain't that type of person to be all up under nobody playing up under you for one day that I might need some money from you, G. You know what I'm saying? I ain't that type of person, bro. I'm a, a loner type motherfucker, so needless to say, bro, I was in depression like a motherfucker. I went back and, uh, you know, luckily, a nigga keep a, a few vehicles for situations like, I got a bump in my head. A nigga keep a few uh, vehicles for situations like that. That's why I put in that video. If y'all remember, I told you never get rid of vehicles that help you get to where you at for situations like this. Cause this, this new school shit, bro, this shit'll go out on you any moment. Old school shit too, but you know what I'm saying? At least you been a built a rapport with your old school vehicle that you know what's wrong with them, so you can pretty much be prepared for the type of money you might have to spend to get it up the part that you've been putting off. You feel me? So I'm back in the 99 shit, stacked my paper up for a couple weeks. But mind you this, about a week after the damn Tahoe breakdown, right? Guess what happened? I'm leaving for work one day. My girl tell me before I walk out the door that night, hey, the dryer went out. It's making some type of weird noise, like it's some shoes in the dryer. So I turn the motherfucker on. Boom, 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 boom. I'm like, we just bought this dryer. Like, a week after we move in, which is like two months ago, bro. I'm like, bro, what else could go wrong? Get to work, have a blowout, sit on side the highway for eight more hours. Have to spend the night in a hotel. Get into it with my little supervisor that's always hating on a nigga. Nigga, I'm talking about 
thing after thing after thing after thing after thing. I'm talking about, man, too much for one nigga type shit. If you familiar with that old boosting, man. Look that special, man. With cheese pie, now won't you break bread with a real nigga? Look like I got a sense served to get a me a ticket. But I'm still with you, cause I'm looking at the big picture. Up in the blow pad, man, cause I'm a ear nigga. I hope the feds ain't laying across the street in that blue Cherokee. Trying to take me from my family, hollering about conspiracy. You got me fucked up, my nigga gone. Been a down one of you bitches, y'all don't leave me alone. And I've been going through some things, going through some change. Can't get past 50 G's like walking through the rain. So, uh, you know, man, nigga had low-key fell into a little light, little depression. Like, man, what's going on? But then I had to remember, man, you know what I'm saying? Job in the Bible, man. Job in the Bible. You know, it's, it's going to be ups and downs, you know, uh, highs and lows, peaks and valleys, man. But you got to remember to keep your eyes on God, man, when you're going through the midst of the storm. Like Peter, when he stepped out of the out of the boat, see, Peter and his little friends and shit, they went out on the boat after uh, following God's orders to go, go ahead in front of him in their boat and cross the sea. So when they got about halfway out into the sea, man, they encountered a storm while they was in this little old bitty boat and the boat started rocking and shit. And then out in the distance, Jesus appeared in front of them, walking on top of the water like this. And he told him, they got scared and shit. Oh, God, is that a ghost? Oh, no. Jesus said, hey, why are you so scared? You know what I'm saying? This is me. Nigga, I told you who I was. I'm the man. You feel me? I could walk on water. I, you know, I'm, I'm part of a man that made all this. So, uh... As they get closer to God, Peter talks to God. He said, man, I'm going to step out in this water, God. You know what I'm saying? So he stepped out in the water. God made the storm go a little bit crazy. The wind started blowing. Peter got scared looking around at the stuff. He said, man, keep your eyes on me, man. You feel me? And when he kept his eyes on God, he was able to get lifted up out of the water. You know what I'm saying? Because his faith had thrown him off. To where he had started drowning as a result of him not having the faith that he was supposed to have. Speaking of faith, here's faith walking in the bathroom. But anyway, uh, I said that to say this, man. When you're in the midst of the storm that you're going through, bro, you got to remember to keep your eyes on God, bro. And your faith in God, bro. Because if you don't, you'll get caught up in the storms and the wind that's going on around you and lose yourself, man. And then you could stumble in the water and start drowning like Peter. But when he kept his eyes on the man, he was able to come up out of that thing. Same thing I had to learn to do, you know, and the same thing that this young brother right here should have done. You feel me? But he probably didn't have anybody to tell him about the Bible and about, you know, how life is about ups and downs and keeping, maintaining your faith in God, bro. So, you know, I said that to say this, man, uh, I got out of work last week, went and got my uh my dryer from the person that fixed it from me. Camera recording. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, I work with them. He ain't even charged me no money. I've been riding good in my 99 Tahoe. I'm finna start putting this money up so I can get the 2012 fixed. I still got other vehicles to drive, man, and I'm still staying focused, man, and not letting it get me down just like Job did, you know what I'm saying? Me and my family had, had the cold in here. I think we had a cold in here about three weeks ago. Come here, show these folks. Come here. Step in front of the camera. Man, we had the cold. We had a cold about three weeks ago, G. All type of stuff, just like Job, man, you know what I'm saying? But you got to maintain your faith, man. Now, let's watch this video, bro. That was just a little, you know what I'm saying, a little motivation for somebody that needed to hear that. But let's watch this video, you know, let's talk about how this young brother. <sighs> yeah. Lafayette Parish. On June 12th. 
2020, a trooper with the Louisiana State Police, Troop I, conducted a traffic stop on a vehicle for following too closely. The trooper then made contact with the driver, 25-year-old DeAndre Brown, and tells him the reason for the stop and asks him about his itinerary. Hang out right there. I'm going to come talk to you. Hang out in the front over there. What's going on, bro? You all right? Yes, you good? Yes, sir. Sure? Yes, sir. Uh, yeah, come on to the left, man. Because I know. I just seen the lights. You ain't never, you never, you never got stopped before? Uh, 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 not on the highway? Yes, whatever you... Whatever you... Hold on. 25. 25? Yeah. You've been driving a while. Man. Yeah. Yeah. So you're driving there when you get stopped where you're going to stop. A lot of times, you know, when something like that, people driving too close and distracted or something like that, they might call the red. You have an ID? I don't have an ID. You have an ID? You have an ID? You have an ID? You have an ID? My girl got the lights. She 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 got the lights. Does she have a light? Yes, sir. Okay. Where y'all heard? After asking about DeAndre's itinerary, the trooper then talked to his girlfriend, Rebecca, to see if her story matched his. Okay. What's your, what's your name? How you doing? Uh, what's your name? Rebecca 18. Rebecca? Okay. Rebecca 18. Who's call you? This is your call. This is your call. Okay, cool. You have your paperwork when you call? Yeah, it's your registration. What are you into, man? Huh? Where's home, man? Get your story together, man, with the people that ride with you, bro. If you're going to be on the interstate with somebody, get your story together where y'all coming from. Now, he's saying they coming from Lake Charles. Well, I just showed y'all I spent the night at the other night. And she's saying they coming from Houston. That's the first red flag for anybody that pull you over that suspect that you're doing criminal activity, bro. See? It's starting out bad. Let's go. That's just a friend? I'm 27. Like boyfriend girl? Yeah, it's your boyfriend? Yeah. Okay. How long y'all been together? Six years. Six years. Yeah. How long? Y'all live together? Yeah. Yeah. Did y'all see anybody? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, recently my little cousin. Yeah. Oh, it's hard to hear that. What, what happened? She got hit. Oh, she got hit by one. Yeah. That's why they were How long ago that happened? Sunday. Today. Oh, she got hit today? Today. How, how long did y'all, uh, did y'all, y'all stay, the, you and your boyfriend stay together the whole time? Yeah. You've been together the whole time? Okay. Um, did y'all stay anywhere? At any hotels or anything? Or what hotel y'all stay at? Um, uh, in, where is it? In, in Texas? Yeah. So she little cousin that got here? Yeah. How old? Was it 
Was it like on a highway or something that she got hit? Or? Um, it was like off a road, a truck hit a road. Wow. Like off the low side. Of the, you know, I'm sure everybody's pretty shook up about it, huh? Yeah. yeah. Alright, so uh, everything's good with your car. You know he don't have a license. I'd rather him drive in the highway. I'm, I don't really care if the highway. You don't like to drive? <laughs> he, has, okay. he, has, he drives your car a lot, all the time? Not really. Uh -huh. no. Not really? Okay. Alright, just hang tight for I'll be right back, okay? okay. You never had a license? Or, have you had a license before? You never had nothing? So where y'all, where you say y'all coming from? Where y'all coming from? Here? Lake Charles. Y'all coming from Lake Charles? Yeah. And who y'all? Who you went visiting with? Yeah. Your cousin or her cousin? No, I'm saying your cousin or her. Your cousin or her cousin? Your or her? Your or her? Your or her? She said they went to visit her cousin who got hit by a truck in Houston. He said they went to visit his cousin in Lake Charles, Louisiana. This shit is getting bad, man. And the dude, the state trooper, he know what's going on. This is getting bad, man. Mm. What's your name? Spell your first name for me. There's a large amount of time. D-E-O-N-B? Or D-O. 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 Okay. Uh-huh. What's your last name? Be there shortly. Brown? Okay. Okay. What's your, what's your birthday? Okay. So y'all be, y'all, you and your uh, girlfriend were together the whole time? Like, y'all never, like, you didn't go one way and she went the other way? Yes, sir. From the rock? Okay. With, uh, what you went do? Like, what did you split? What did she go do whenever she left? She left and she went her way. She came she left and she went her way. Where she went when she dropped it off? Alright, hang tight for a second, alright? After hearing both DeAndre and Rebecca's story, the trooper discussed the differences in both of their stories, raising their suspicion for criminal activity. Fucking niggas with no license, niggas with no insurance, illegal drivers, illegal riders, people with passengers that have criminal uh, open cases. Stop riding after you smoke weed in your car. Stop smoking weed in your car. That gives them probable cause to go further with the traffic stop. If they just pull you over for speeding, they could pull you over for speeding. And if they smell weed in the car, that gives them probable cause to extend the traffic stop to a search, you know what I'm saying? And then if you don't fucking give them authorization to search your car, they gonna call for K-9 and K-9 is gonna alert them to the smell of marijuana because you've been smoking in the car. Now you done got everything illegal that you was doing inside that car 
found out about because you were smoking in the car. Stop smoking in the car. If you hadn't given them probable cause by smoking in this particular situation, you probably would have got away with those pills and shit that you was doing, bro. But you gave them probable cause. Stop smoking in your car if you're a fucking criminal in the act of doing criminal shit. Stop. What, what I mean, stop smoking in the car. Get out. Pull over to the rest area. Smoke your little shit, bump it, get back in the car and ride. Put that shit in the trunk. Wrap it up in a fucking paper towel. Put it in your in your uh prison wallet. Put it in your fucking gas tank in the corner of your car where the gas gonna disguise it. Stick it up under your bumper. Do anything. Put it up under your hood and put a brick on top of it. I don't care what you do. Put it in the Altoid box inside of a little stash spot in your trunk or up under your hood. Put it up under your battery under your hood. Do anything but stop smoking weed inside your car. It gives you probable cause, man. <laughs> Very, yes, sir. I hadn't even mentioned nothing about him why he just got off the interstate. I didn't even hit him with that shit. Yeah. We can, well, 1022 there, bro. After we find it, we can find it. We can yeah. find it. The trooper then goes back and talks to Rebecca and confront her about the car smelling like marijuana and asking her for consent to search the vehicle. Basically telling us you uh we 
search the car and any contents in the car, all right? This is you, this is your address, your name, this is who I am, and this is the other trooper here, okay? If you want to read this and sign, I'm not forcing you to sign, you don't have to sign, okay? I don't want you to think I'm coercing you or making you, you know, giving you like, hey, you better sign. You don't have to, it's your right, okay? okay. But you have that option, so this is a consensus search. If you want to sign it, you go ahead and sign it, all right? Do you want to sign it? No. No? Okay, okay. let's go ahead and step out for you. Hang tight, Becky. You don't have no Since Rebecca did not consent to search the vehicle, the K-9 is already at the scene and it performs an open air search around the vehicle. Region 2, I'm 28. You can smell the weed now. 28. Hey. Get an ID only on that subject. It's supposed to have a deal. Hey. Shit. You block. You block. Four. Can you imagine the tension, the anxiety? The thoughts going through these people's head right now, bro, you know what you just went and picked up? And they just got pulled over. And in all of 15 minutes, bro, these folks have pulled you out, out the car, asked you all these questions. You damn near at home, you know what I'm saying? They just pulled a dog out the car. You know you got this shit. Damn, what's the chance of them finding this shit? Do them motherfuckers alert to the smell of pills? Is it only weed? Is it only coke that they alert the smell of? All this shit going through your head if you ain't never been stopped and had a dog alert on you for, you know, something beside weed before. But you know they gonna alert to the weed. So you know you were already bammed because the smell of weed is in the car. But they don't know about what's in the... Are they going to go through the trunk? Are they going to go in my trunk? You asking yourself all these questions. Should I run? Should I take off running right now in the woods? Then the dog going to get me. My girl right here, bro. Damn, bro. All this shit sounded good, bro. When I was thinking about how I could just get myself out of that jam real quick. I needed that $5,000, bro. You know what I'm saying? But now I done put myself in a situation where... My shit finna be way worse than just 5000 that I could have got over time. Now my shit finna be fucked off if they find this shit, bro. These are the things you have to think about before you just make that, that temporary decision to try to get yourself out of a jam real quick, bro. Man, ain't no shortcuts to this shit, bro. Taking shortcuts in life, bro, they always have you going all the way around. Further than you should have. You know what I'm saying? You spend more time doing the shortcut. Going all the way around after that shortcut play out. You feel me? Like, nigga take a shortcut to try to get $500 by robbing a bank. And then end up doing 25 to 30 years. Look how that shortcut took you all the way around the fucking lake. You feel me? Instead of just walking out on the dock and fishing right there. You had to walk all the way around the whole fucking lake or the whole fucking, you know what I'm saying? Like, that shortcut shit ain't it all the time, bro. Let's look at this, though, man. Damn, it's almost over, man. We got like five, six minutes, too. Mm, mm, mm. Oh. Yeah, Come here. Oh, 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 the boys. 
the K9 alerts and the troopers search the vehicle. I want to go eat. Nick. Nick. What time, what time you want to go eat? Yeah, we're going to eat at Timothy. Hey, let's go eat. Alright, guys. Okay. Right. Set in. Let's see. You need to quit putting yourself around these kind of people, okay? You understand? How old are you? You have your whole future ahead of you. You're just hanging out with the wrong crowd. You understand what I'm saying? You just how long ago you got arrested for uh, narcotics? Ma'am, you got your whole life ahead of you. Okay? Like this ain't the end. I'm, we're not judging you, but you got to make better decisions, okay? Obviously, y'all stories are completely different. Did he explain that to you? I mean, yeah. You went visit family. They went, he went to Lake Charles, but y'all together the whole time. I mean, how does two people that drive together for 24 hours and they have two different stories? But I hope from here that you learn your lesson. Man, you're young. You have your whole life ahead of you. Okay. Now, this is what's gonna happen. I'm just gonna read you your rights because you're under arrest, right? You have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can or be held against you in the court of law. You have the right to have an attorney present while you're being questioned. If you cannot afford an attorney, one will be appointed to you at no cost, okay? You understand your rights? Okay. What's gonna happen is we're gonna, we're gonna meet with some DEA agents, okay? They have, they're fairly, they have federal commissions, okay? That'll be your opportunity to speak with them. Uh, if you want to, that's be between you and them. But man, you're 23 years old, you have kids? Um, like I said, we're not here to judge you. It's just y'all made a bad decision. All right. The troopers find a total of 46,089 MDMA pills, all containing methamphetamine, with a total weight of 6.5 kilograms. Both DeAndre and Rebecca were arrested and taken to the Lafayette Parish Correctional Center for possession with the intent to distribute methamphetamine. Rebecca was sentenced to one year of federal probation for withholding information of a crime. DeAndre Brown was sentenced to 120 months in federal prison, followed by five years of supervised release for drug trafficking. Ten years, my nigga. Ten years, bro. This shit probably all started as a quick little get-rich-quick scheme. You know what I'm saying? Went through a valley. Pockets got low. He probably had been up for a minute. You know what I'm saying? Doing good. Just like all of us do, man. You know what I'm saying? We'll be up for a minute and then we have to be tested by God. You know what I'm saying? To see if our faith is still with him. Who the person we gonna call on when we going through something. When a, a, a storm comes in the water like Peter, are you gonna 
depend on what your resources are? Or are you going to choose to call out on God? That's what the test be for, man, to see who you're going to call out for, who you're going to turn to to see who can help you out. And uh, his brother here, man, he tried to take things into his own hands instead of waiting out and being patient and seeing what God had, you know, like Jesus say, trust the process. He didn't want to see what the process was going to be and how it was going to make him stronger and better as a person. He just wanted to take these things into his own hands and get out of the situation as fast as he can by any means. Even if that means I got to resort to taking a trip and trafficking that dope. You feel me? Can't be like that, man. You know what I'm saying? You can, but you know, when God feel disrespected by you not choosing him first, this is the type of stuff that can happen. You get jammed up trying to do it on your own. You put yourself in a bigger situation than you was initially in. What might have been a $1,000 problem to turn it to 10 years now. With five under supervision, once you get out, you know what I'm saying? And you're doing fed time. Your girl done got a year on uh, on probation or whatever they said, bro. Man, bro, you just landed yourself in a pickle, man, all for a temporary situation. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, these guys, these rappers don't tell you about the bad part when they going through a, 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 a valley and what they do. Some of them take out loans, you know, uh, when people had an IRS problem, like Lil Wayne, he had an IRS problem. He ain't come out and rap about that. You know what I'm saying? Why they don't rap about this type of stuff? Eddie Murphy don't talk about that. You know, they make these movies, they entertain us all day, but they don't they don't tell us about how they deal with situations like that. Boosie, Rollo say when he was trying to build his house and he went broke trying to build his house, he came to Rollo and asked if he can get some money or whatever he asked him for. It might have been cold worry for going to get something else. I don't know. But I'm just saying, they don't talk to us about this. All you hear is the good shit. Oh, pool party this weekend. You know what I'm saying? When other people have financial issues, they don't tell us about when they have those financial issues. They just tell us the good. Well, I'm telling you the bad. When the bad comes, man, you sit down and you trust your process. And you keep on living life the same way you've been living. Don't try to do no brash, uh, quick little get-rich schemes. Because you're laying yourself in a pickle like this young brother right here did, man. You know, ain't nobody else going to tell you. But I'll tell you, man. You feel me? Because I don't want to see you throw it away. Not for a temporary valley, bro. We all panic when they happen. But, you know, you got to be strong and go on through them, G. All right, I'm out, man. I got to go to work tonight. Peace. I got to stack this money for this transmission up, bro.